Welcome to my presentation of the torque converter worksheet. Um, this is using a MODIS snap-on scanner. Um, as you can see right here, you got a 2007 Silverado, which we have. Uh, it's a four-wheel drive um, with a 5.3 sequential fuel injection. Um, what we're going to do today is we're going to actually uh, take a look at transmission parameters with the MODIS um, and I'm going to show you exactly what's going on uh, when you when you go into some of these um, data displays We're going to go into the transmission area Because that's what we're looking at we entered the K17 key adapter into the ALDL connector So we're going to press press yes to continue and we're going to go into the data display and we're, there's a couple things that we can look at here the trans data one and two we're going to go into one and just explain what's going on here okay right now we have uh, RPM this is basically just the RPM of it an idle because um, we're at actually in idle um, and we're actually in park <laughs> excuse me um, right now in park you can see right here that the torque delivery is about 20 newton meters of torque because um, you see the NM in there that's actually called newton meters um, the vehicle speed obviously we're sitting still right at this moment so we're at zero miles an hour um, the shift solenoid one to two that's uh, there's two shift solenoids on the L60 that's what we got in this truck um, and they're both on during the park uh, gear um, and you can see the shift solenoid 1 and 2 is on the shift solenoid 2 and 3 is off or I'm sorry on and um, the current RPM which is their output is zero which makes sense because we're not moving the vehicle um, current gear um, it just says one but really it's in park um, the trans range switch this is actually in park. I can put it in reverse and you'll see it go to R. This is neutral. And that's drive. And then I'll go to third, second, and first. Now what's interesting about the trans range switch and the trans fluid pressure switch is we talked about this last week in our class. Remember when I said that the hydraulic pressure actually turns on the the, the TFP switch and the trans range, trans range switch is actually on the actual transmission itself. So when the linkage actually goes from park to reverse this here on the left side the trans range switch this is actually going mechanically into reverse and hydraulically the TFP switch is telling the ECM hydraulically I'm in actual reverse and then we go to neutral once again you can see on the left side the TR range switch that's the trans range switch on the transmission is telling the ECM the linkage itself is in neutral hydraulically I'm in neutral in the trans same for drive this would be D4 D4 position on the trans range switch is D4 the trans fluid pressure switch is actually telling the ECM I'm ready to command fourth gear or have four gears uh, and then when you go to low, obviously our trans range switch is D1, and then the TFP switch is on low. Second gear, this one actually has uh, an interesting thing because it actually has um, a trans range switch, which the trans range switch, if it's in D2 position, it's telling the ECM that yes, I want to start off in second gear. And the second shift gear uh, downshift state here, if you could see the shift solenoid 1, 2, that's off, and then the um, 2, 3 solenoid is on. That means that hydraulically, um, it's showing that the second rate or the second gear is on hydraulically at the switch but it, the command state for the the ECM is actually starting off in second gear that's because in second gear on an L60 the 1 2 shift solenoid is off the 2 3 solenoid is on if you have that gear state or the solenoid state <clears throat> which is off and on well you'll have a second gear starts because if you put it down in one 
Well, you see they both turned on. That means that it's going to start off in second gear, or uh, first gear, with uh, one, two is on, and then two, three is on. So let's go down and explain a little bit more about this. We see here that the TR switch, these are actually the wires going to the ECM, low, high. Um, you got four uh, uh, little uh, wires that are actually going to the ECM and those wires basically mean that they're, they're a range and this is the, we're talking about the trans range switch uh, sensor that's actually right on the uh, the east or the right on the the linkage itself there's that range switch sensor that I was talking about on the trans you see when I put it in reverse you see there's a couple on, ones that are changed. The TR switch on A is low, TR switch on B is low, and then C and P are high, and then when I put it in neutral, you see it goes high, high, and then uh, the B and P is low and low. And then when I put it in drive, put it in three, actually in three they're actually all low, and then when I put it in second, and when I put it in first. And when I go back to park, see that? So so these, the, the TR switches, those are the external wires going to my ECM once again that tell the ECM, yes, we are in those gears based on the gear position state that those are in. The TFP switch, like I say, there's three um, combination wires that tell the ECM hydraulically what gear I'm in. And we went over this in class. When I put it in reverse, you see the switch states change. Put it in neutral, put it in drive. This is third gear, that second gear, and that's first gear. And then once again, that's park. So we can clearly see that the TFP switches do change from the, the position that you're actually shifting in. So another one to look at here is the coolant. That's just our engine coolant. That's just the temperature of the motor as, as we speak. Uh, hot mode hot mode is a uh, a transmission um, it, it's a it's a function of the transmission and how hot it actually gets so if if it gets up to a certain criteria the hot mode will say yes and it will definitely uh, shift a little differently um, there's certain things that hot mode does to a trans um, that like it what it'll basically do is it'll eliminate uh, it'll lock up your TCC to try to cool down the transmission temperature. Um, they use that to actually uh, try to get the transmission to cool down. Um, and really, you don't really see that hot mode come on unless you're really doing something bad or the transmission is really damaged or the cooling lines are not working. Um, the PCS, that's that's what we were talking about in class. And that's actually what we were doing. Uh, we were actually messing around with that. Remember when we were ramping up and down that amperage? Uh, 50% duty cycle right now, just sitting in park, no idle, you're basically just an idle speed of five, 600 RPMs, uh, 600 RPMs, okay. Um, so we have a desired, and then we have an actual. Um, these two can vary once in a while, and what can happen is that the actual um, temperature, or the actual amperage um, can maybe be uh, a little bit around the desired usually that's the case but what happens is if, if the actual uh, amperage is maybe 0.5 and we need a desired at you know maybe an amp well there's a half amp dif difference right there um, so it will set codes for that um, and I'll go over that a little bit more on our test drive. Uh, the PCS duty cycle, like I said, that's just a 50%. That's how much on time that we have with the solenoid. Um, the TCC brake switch, well, I had my foot on the brake. Obviously, this is my foot off the brake. That's my foot on the brake. Off the brake, 
on the brake. So that TCC brake switch, what it actually does is it actually um, tells the TCC to open up and basically stop the locking of the solenoid, and we'll explain that on our test drive. Uh, the TCC enable switch, well, obviously it's disabled right now, so no, it's not on. We'll go down. Okay, the TCC duty cycle, well that's how much the TCC duty cycle is on. That's actually the pulse width modulation solenoid. We're not right we're not even doing anything right now with it, so we'll we'll explain that on the test drive. Uh, the TCC slip. Obviously, when we're sitting here and drive, what we're actually doing is we're creating a um, a fluid uh, coupling stage right now, right? So both of the um, both of the, uh, the the impeller and the turbine are actually spinning almost at the same speed. So yes, you're going to have a little bit of slip right here, and that slip speed right there is kind of telling you the difference between engine RPM and a turbine shaft RPM. The uh, trans slip uh, CNT. Um, not sure what that is. I, I guess I'd have to look that one up. Um, the last shift, that's how many milliseconds it took to shift from first to second or whatever. Um, well, actually, that's just the last shift. So if it took first to second, it would say that third second to third it would say it. Um, these are actually what you were looking at here. The first shift, the second shift, that's how many milliseconds it took the last time. Um, second to third, third to fourth, these are how much time it took from third to third to fourth, second to third, you get, you, you get the picture. Um, and what this does is it monitors the ECM uh, engine RPM. So when it commands the shift, immediately when it commands the shift, it's looking at the engine RPM. So if the engine RPM is sitting there, um, you know, and it goes up to, I don't know what, what it could be at, maybe 4,000 RPM, and it commands that shift, the minute or the second, the millisecond it commands that shift, it's looking at the time it took from the RPM drop time. So, you know, like 4,000 to, you know, 25 or something like that. It's looking for how long did it take for the RPM to drop and then remain stable and then go. And then that's like the, the, the shift time. And then obviously we have our ignition voltage. Um, let's see, we're going to go to data display. Trans data two. Okay, this is some other stuff that we got here. Obviously, we just talked about the shift time. And then this is the shift error. The shift error is actually a desired. Uh, okay, what, what it is is like if it's looking for. 0.5 seconds and it's shifting at 0.4 seconds what the shift error it's going to do it's going to say 0 0.10 for a shift error right because it's actually um it, it's actually shifting uh point okay point four point five okay if it's at point five it was looking for point okay i i, I guess i got that all screwed up um the shift error basically tells the difference between desired and the actual. So let let me just reiterate: if it's at a half a second and the shift time goes down to 0.4, but the desired was at 0.5, it's going to show an error of 0.10 seconds or 0.10 milliseconds or whatever it is. Um, so those are the errors. These right here, this one-two shift solenoid status check. If there was an open, if there was a short, uh, your ECM would know it and it would say over here, not no fault, but it would actually show you an open or a short or something like that. Um, good thing with OBD2 is they actually tell you those things on the scanner. Um, so those are really helpful if you actually do have a circuit short that you're actually kind of concerned about. Um, what this actually does is the ECM is actually monitoring the 12 volt impulse or the zero volt impulse that it's actually ex uh, expected to see right now. And if it doesn't see that um, at the pin, um, like the ground side of the circuit, it may be, it's supposed to see a zero, it's supposed to see a 12. Well, if it's seeing the opposite, what it's gonna do is it's gonna determine, okay, well, that was a short, that was a, a open or something like that, and it'll actually display it here. So if you ever have um, a trans, um, 
that actually has a, um, I guess, a code on there with a with a circuit, you can actually sit there and look at these things and actually say, whoa, you know, I got I got a open or a short or something like that. You, th these things are very helpful to, to really look at that stuff. So let, let's, uh, let's do one thing right here. You see the engine torque right here? I'm going to put this thing in reverse.